the rain didn't stop, it just kept coming. So people went to sleep that night uh, in their apartments and their houses and their homes, and they woke up the next morning with literally water in their bedroom. You know, the thing that was most, I guess, devastating about it is that it came so quickly. You know, before you could really react to it, it was just there. You know, that was an unprecedented amount of water that fell on this community. There's emotional devastation when this occurs. And when we were out rescuing people that tried to ride the flood out, there was uh, individuals, senior citizens, and children that we were able to get out of their homes that uh, appeared to be in shock. And uh, there, was, there were kids that were shaking, they were speechless because they had never seen anything like this. And that's devastating. You had people that had to, unfortunately, they were now living in a perilous situation and get them help to try to get their uh, belongings out. We had 277 apartments just in Monroe alone flood at five different properties. Uh, we were actually wading through water waist high, uh, getting people out of apartment complexes and walking them back to a waiting vehicle to take them away. You can't prepare for a thousand year storm. And that, that's what a lot of people, and they don't really understand that. A lot of our employees were actually out working, rescuing people when their homes were underwater as well. And it was painful because uh, most of these people, I'm sure, didn't have flood insurance. So without flood, because who would have who would have bought flood insurance in an area that doesn't flood? It's a thousand years, you know, a thousand. That means that in my lifetime, in your lifetime, you will never see this experience again. We just knew that that meant this, this was not going to be over when the rain stopped. That actually at least two-thirds of the event was going to come after the rain as the water was rising in the backwater. Uh, we moved approximately 5,000 tons of debris. And if you just think about it, if we had five tons, per, we probably averaged about five tons per load to the landfill. That's about 1,000 truckloads of debris that we removed from the city of Monroe. People realizing the greater good is what's really important and helping those that were in such enormous need. It saw no boundaries. I don't think it saw racial divide. I don't think it saw geographical divide. I think people were willing to go where there was a need. A thousand six people were mobilized, as far as we know, numbers-wise, uh, from our church to help people in the first um, 72 hours. I've seen a lot of a lot of tears, a lot of tears, but you know, but actually helping one another, still crying, lost of everything. They had nothing but the clothes on their back. So you now, but I, I seen them working together. You know, everybody holding each other up. You know, you know, uh, leaning on each other. So certainly, that's what I seen throughout, throughout to, up to this day. I know there's a lot of people that are still not back in their homes that are still having. Um, those types of uh, challenges in their life. It's very difficult, so being di displaced, I think, is um, a whole different scenario. optimistic about our future because of what I saw during the floods. Uh, it was inspiring to me that so many different people from different backgrounds could come together, work for a common good. Because now we're looking at a common goal. We all are working towards making our community better, making it a place where quality, everybody can enjoy the quality of life. 
what I see is a growing community. And then when you see that, you know everything is going to be all right. And things are going to be much better in the future.